Sometimes, when we modify one process in a sequence, we change the image in such a way that we have to modify all the subsequent processes too. Here, we have an image of IC342. Like NGC 6946, this galaxy is seen through our galaxy's veil of interstellar dust. The reddening effect of the dust is much stronger in this image of IC342 than in the one of NGC 6946. This means that if we calibrate with PCC using an average spiral galaxy for the white balance, the resulting galaxy colors will mostly be shades of brown and gold. We're going to try a second processing sequence with a new white balance using the galaxy itself as a reference. This should optimize the way the colors are displayed inside the galaxy. To do this, first, we're going to create an exact copy of the image. We go to the image's initial state and create a copy. We're going to calibrate the second image with color calibration. Both images are in a state prior to the background neutralization step, so we unlink the RGB channels in the STF and apply the auto stretch. We're going to use the same preview of the sky background in the new image, so we need to copy it over. And we're going to select the galaxy as the white reference preview. We're going to do it slightly differently in this case. Instead of selecting the whole galaxy, we're going to take an area around the center. We're doing this for two reasons. First, if we expand the preview, it will include these bright blue stars, which will count as light from the galaxy. We don't want these stars to contaminate the white reference data. Second, this galaxy has a very low surface brightness, and if we extend the preview to include the whole galaxy, the light from the stars will impact the white balance a lot. So in this case, we're going to include only the central area, which includes the nucleus, but also a large part of the spiral arms. Now we open Color Calibration. We add Preview 1 as the region of interest for the background reference and Preview 2 as the region of interest for the white reference. We uncheck the Structure Detection box so that the process takes all the light inside the white reference preview into account. Now we open the STF process window again, and we apply the auto stretch. Now we open Background Neutralization. We add Preview 1 as the background reference. It doesn't matter whether we apply color calibration first or background neutralization first, so long as we apply the two processes. Once we've applied them both, we can link the RGB channels and click on Auto Stretch to see the new color balance. We're going to compare the image with the original, which we modified with PCC. We move forward a step in the history, apply the Auto Stretch, and now we can compare the two. To do this, we're going to copy the Galaxy Preview over onto the original image. We open Pixel Math and overlay the new image. Remember, because it's a linear image, we need to make another adjustment in the image medians. In addition to the color change, the galaxy is less bright in the new image. This is because we've decreased the lightness of the red channel a lot. This means that any contrast adjustments we make to the original image won't work in the new image. Let's move on and see what happens when we apply the histogram adjustment. We configured the histograms with very low contrast because the blue channel is very noisy and clipping here means clipping almost half a million pixels. That's why we apply these curves after the histogram adjustment. They make the sky background darker, but don't clip pixel values. 
Here's the result. Now let's try applying the same stretch to the new image. First, the histograms. As with the NGC 6946 example, this stretch doesn't work for us. If we look here, we can see that we're clipping 12 million pixels. If we zoom in on the histogram, we can see that it's not suitable at all. This is because these other tools have made the sky background darker. We're going to adjust it in the same way. And now we can stretch the image. Now let's apply the same curves. We're going to make a copy of the main view and compare the two results with the curves applied. These images aren't linear anymore, so we can overlay the image, transferring pixels from one to the other. The curves adjustment doesn't have the same effect. The galaxy is less bright now. We need to apply a second curves adjustment to achieve a similar result. Here's how to apply the adjustment. We select this image and open the real-time preview. We want it to look similar. The result is never going to be exactly the same, but we're looking for a similar result. We apply the process again. So this new version has required two curves adjustments. The same thing happens with the color saturation. Now we're going to increase the color saturation. As this image is already quite red, we can enhance all the colors with just one color saturation curve. But what happens if we apply the same curve to the second image? we're going to need even more color saturation. Let's compare the two. To draw out the different tones in the arms and nucleus, we need to enhance the color inside the galaxy more than we did in the original image. So changing the white balance doesn't just affect the sky background and its stretch, it also affects the processes we use to control the contrast.